All right, what surfing really looks like. Episode three, Sand Point, Southwest Chile. For those who use solo shot, just a little refresher. Set up the board about 50 feet away from the camera. Leave the little strap on there. Calibrate with the tag, then run over to the board area. Put the tag in the strap, put the strap on my arm. Get the board out of the bag. It's a 5-3 asymmetrical fish by Charles Mansell. I've seen this board before in the first episode. I like this board. It's got a little spicy attitude to it. It's really thin, so there are some different things I have to think about when I'm surfing this board. Putting too much pressure on the rails, I can sink the rail really easily. Sometimes less less is more with this board, so I really gotta sometimes baby the rail around turns. If I press too hard, I'll spin out. This wave is a sand point. There are multiple sand points, so that one up to my left is also a sand point. You're gonna see a nice tubing wave up there to my left right now. Look at that thing. Wow, nobody out. That was a big theme down there. There are so many waves like this down there. Uh, you just gotta go find them. And uh, put my leash on there. So the way these, a lot of the waves work down where we were surfing, there's a rock outcropping, a variety of, this one's a little one. There are all kinds of different size ones. And then the sand piles up around the rocks. So it's shallower around the rocks. And then the swells curve, carve out the sand inside, making a big like bay. So you see this wave breaking at the top of the rock pile. That's not the takeoff spot. Takeoff spot's just to my right. And as I ride waves and as the camera pans to the right, you'll see the curvature of this bay, especially when I'm running back to the takeoff zone. So. Some themes for this video are going to be, uh, well, there's me celebrating one of Nelson's rides. Uh, I'm out coaching. I had been filming before I paddled out, but then they were having a little bit of trouble lining up on the peak, so got the solo shot out. So one of the things is going to be how to paddle out of these waves using the rip. Another one is going to be taking off under the crumbling, breaking part of the wave. I have a few slow-mos of my takeoffs in here. Uh, so here's an example of using the rip. See that, well, right when that rip starts to go, I start paddling out diagonally away from the rocks. There's Nelson and Shane doing the walk around. Those are the guys I was cheering. Uh, anytime you see me cheering and you don't see somebody riding, they're taking some long wave. I'm looking at an inside wave here. That would be another theme is beginners and intermediates and even good surfers. Like sometimes those inside waves hug the bar really well, uh, where the outside waves kind of go out to sea at a wave like that. There's Bonnie. Just needed two more paddles for that wave. Not the best wave. It had some lump in it. And then Allie behind her is a little bit too deep. So finding that right wave, that right takeoff area is really important especially when you're surfing a wave that has a very distinct takeoff spot like this one did with the way the sand was formed. I'm already looking at that one. Do I get in? Yeah, there were so many waves. So get in right away. There's that board just surprising me. And this is what I mean by a sand point. The wave goes left. There was a little fishing buoy right there and my leash got caught on my foot. The wave goes left and only left, all the way into this little bay right here. Just gonna look at this one. So it's all about the takeoff. I look in a way too deep, but you see how crumbly that lip is and look at how I'm looking at the wave. I'm paddling myself in an angle to the shoulder. And right here, now I'm in the perfect spot. I let the wave lift me up one, two paddles, and just right under the lip there, I'm gonna get to my feet. So that's what I mean when I'm telling people to meet the wave's power with your power. You kind of just shut that lip, lip down with your, your own back. Um, the leash is wrapped around my foot at this point in the ride. 
didn't quite get up on the lift there. And you can see how small, short, let's say, the rail line of this board is for waves of this size. So this is what I mean about babying the board a little bit through the through the turns. Let's get up higher again. Now I'm on the mid line. Never going all the way down, just trying to use the wave's power to project me out onto this shoulder. There's the fishing buoy that I'm going to pass, and now I'm like, all right, the leash needs to get off of this back foot. And that is one of the downsides of surfing with leashes. They get stuck around your foot. So this wave was a mushier wave. That's why we picked this one for all of us to surf, where the wave up the way was a lot steeper, more vertical, would have would have been harder for everybody to surf. Yeah, if I was surfing on my own, probably preferred to be surfing that wave, but this is a great consolation prize. Really long rides all the way into this bay. And just taking the wave as far as it will go. See this little end section down here? And I'm gonna blow it. A little backwash hits me right here. And bye. So solo shot showing you the curvature of this bay here. You're gonna get a really good look at it as I do the run around. That wave I I rode really far, so better saving my arms, using my legs to get back to the takeoff spot. Always riding a white water into the shore. Wave is your taxi. And here we go. Cross training for surfing. There, look at the curvature of that bay. You can really see how carved out it is. And so that's swells coming from the southerly direction. Again, they deposit sand up at those rock outcroppings and then they carve out the sand, leaving a really distinct differentiation between shallowness and depth from the takeoff spot and the inside of the bay. And that's what makes it a point but it's a sand point. So it doesn't mean that this wave is gonna be there forever. It's probably pretty favorably situated to develop this kind of sandbar often. But in this trip, for example, two storms came through. And by the time the second storm was done and over, this wave did not look like this. There, the whole takeoff area where I'm taking off was filled with sand and that part turned into a closeout and it just really it wasn't as good of a wave as this it needed more time there you see the fin setup of this board again i'm just checking back to see if i see that green light i want to see that camera tracking me did a pretty awesome job on this session there's nelson going back out so we just keep hitting that same spot that paddle out zone right inside the rock pile there bonnie and ally waiting out the sets. We're going to check in. This is also kind of what coaching on a trip looks like. Checking in, doing strategy, giving you guys tips for how to do the paddle out. So this is going to be a really instructional part for paddling out through the inside. I'm wading out slowly. You see sets pulsing in. This day was hyper consistent. There, again, there were just so many waves. So I'm not in a hurry to lay down and paddle on my board while there are waves coming in. And like I said earlier, you'll see, and you'll see this again, I'm going to figure out a little moment when the waves die down a little bit. I'm going to celebrate Nelson getting another sick ride. And then I'm going to use that diagonal rip to pull me away from the peak and out into the bay, and then I'm going to circle back. I usually advocate that you paddle through the inside with about 40 to 60% energy, but there are times when you have to just be a little bit more aggressive in a duck dive or, uh, or going through a white water like a torpedo or a push-up. So here, look at it's about 40-60%. I'm using the rip. I'm using the current to get me around these waves so I'm not taking them on the head. 
there's a, a lull right now too, so I'm not even gonna really have to duck dive this one. Look, just a little a little baby duck dive, and I'm out the back. That Shane right there. Now I've like toned the paddling down to about 30%, and Bonnie's coming behind me, and watch, she's gonna get, she gets a little bit rattled by that white water, and that little hesitation alone, not going at that white water full speed, causes her to get caught inside by a set, which you're gonna see happen right now. So another little white water comes and just that one that she didn't hit hard enough, put her far enough inside of the rip that now that this set's coming through, she'll have to do the paddle again. Again, so many waves, look at that perfect one just went through uh, without either of us on it. Shane's looking at this one, but he's too deep. I'm looking at it now because I'm a little more on the shoulder, duck dive, and it was hard to help myself because I'd get out there, nobody's out, and this thing, look, I'm just in position again. I'm going to slow down that takeoff for you guys after I'm done riding this wave. Grab rail cutback, important move for everybody to learn. way past the buoy on this one. This one was a little bit more out to sea and then I get caught up in it right here. So that, that's an example of a wave that's breaking more into the deeper part of the bay. All right, so Shane is a little deep on this wave. Where the wave is at, it's breaking on him, but I'm far enough on the shoulder. And actually that part's heavy, but where I am, it's soft. So look at how angled I am here. I'm just underneath the lip and it's just gonna pick me up and it's softer there than you think. So I stand up my back against the white water, get to my feet, and it's just gonna shoot me out. And it's just having a little bit of the gumption to just try for it. Here I'm super loaded up, project out onto the shoulder and reaching for that front rail with my back hand. This keeps me low and over the surfboard, but it's pretty much scraping the water right there. But if I wasn't that low and I didn't have the hand on the rail, there's a lot of chop on this wave, I probably would have just spun out or you know, had to just ride without turning. So that got me back to the power source. This time, I opt to paddle back out because if we remember, I got bucked off. That wave went out to sea and it's a really good idea to mix up the paddling back out with the walking around because here I'm getting a whole different vantage point of the takeoff zone and uh, the different kinds of waves that are coming through because again, some waves at a point break, based upon the swell direction of the one wave that's coming in, right? Because all waves are coming from one particular swell, but because of the process that we call refraction, which is like the bending of the swell bands, they come at slightly different angles. And sometimes they, the, certain waves come in and they go like, again, out to sea, they bend out and, and they have like a mushier face. So they might be the bigger sets, but they're not the better waves. Passing the fishing buoy here. Um, so you want the waves, I want the waves that stand up a little bit more. Sometimes you want, you know, you maybe want the mushy ones if you're a newer surfer and you don't know what to do with all the speed of a vertical wall. But once you're advancing and you want to be working on turns and stuff, you want to be looking for the waves that are hugging the bar. So like wrapping around, not going out to sea, but standing up, we say, standing up with a vertical wall on the inside. So you have more of a canvas to work with. Other thing to note here is just, again, that 40%, 30% paddle. I'm not in a hurry to get out there. I uh, gotta conserve my energy. Every wave I get, I don't get a lot of waves this session, but every wave I do get is so long. You can see the current um, pulling north. And uh, legs are together. This is another interesting thing that I talk a, a lot about too in sessions with people. So short borders, when we're paddling, we give this perception that our legs are flat, but my legs are actually slightly up. So if I was on a longboard, you would see more that my heels and toes and that whole shin to foot part of my body is more up in the air. On a shortboard, it makes it look like 
my legs are are straight because the tail is underwater. The tail's so thin that with my knees having that positive connection to the back of the surfboard, my knees and my thighs, they're sinking the board. All right, so now I've made it to the peak. The crew's all out there. Nobody got a wave while I was paddling out. That's Bonnie to the far right. Or Nelson to the far right. Shane to my next left. And that's Bonnie with the bluer surfboard. More waves coming through. Look at this little insider. Those are the good ones. Those little inside ones, the wall that stay up. Nelson. So you see Nelson there was just not at the peak enough. That's why in these kind of point break waves, you really want to make sure, you know, honestly kind of airing to be a little bit too deep so that, you know, the wave can get you. Because if you're on the shoulder, it's just really unforgiving. It will not let you into the wave. You know, it's just going to, a perfect wave is going to go underneath you. This was a moment in the session, too, where the rip picked up. You can see that uh, when people ask, like, what is a rip? Well, you see the water moving sideways here. You see the boils. And now I'm doing the work to get past everybody. Uh, they had the option, and I'm going to pick up this one right when I'm back out, because or I was going to look at that one. But now they're all too far on the shoulder, so that rip's pulling people off the peak. So if you're the kind of surfer that wants to do the work to stay on the peak or just stay on the side of the rip where the wave is breaking, you'll get the waves. There's plenty of this. This lineup could have handled like 30 people. So going for an inside wave here, just, you know, going for it. And I'm going to miss the rips pulling me off of that one. And what I'm showing the crew here is just how active you can be. The... You have to kind of work and hunt to find those inside ones. See that water really swirling. Probably telling Bonnie about these little inside ones. And when I was paddling out, I would have seen like a zillion good ones. So I'm probably a little frothing to get on one of those because there's something kind of unsatisfying about the big mushy sets. Like you got a big wave and it was cool, but then when you're paddling back out, you see all these ones with these vertical walls. Underneath the rip, underneath the wave, and got one of the little insiders, but it wasn't a super good one. Still, I just wanted to show the crew, like, these are the waves I wanted you guys to take off on. I'm going to look at that one in slow motion again. All right, so I see where I am deep under the rip. Everybody's been pulled off the corner of this wave. So I did all this work to get under, right under, right there. Couple of extra paddles, looking down the line, up to the feet, hands off the board. And from here, I'm gonna be able to project right out onto the shoulder and do a wrapping turn back to the power source hands matching with the feet back to the white water little rebound so that I can come out of that white water again now I'm gonna do a more concerted bottom turn and just tap the lip right here and then this one was not quite the wave that I was looking for I wanted it to stand up through the inside here and it was just like nope so I'm gonna cut my losses kick out, paddle back around. So my hope was that after I caught that one in the rip, somebody from the crew would have gone and done the same thing. Monkey see, monkey do. That's always the hope. So I'm giving it, you know, again, another 30%, 60% paddle back out, hoping to see one of my crew on an inside wave flying past me here. Um, it was super challenging though for everybody. Nelson got some incredible waves in this session. And so did Shane. Allie and Bonnie struggled a bit. They got a few waves, but it was a struggle. It's, it's a difficult chess game to figure out how to be on the right inside wave. There you see this current. A lot of people ask, like, how can you tell a rip? And it's that choppy water, the chop that's not created by the wind. Kind of looks like a little bit of a river rapid. 
there's Nelson. And when you're surfing in a rip, that's all the more reason to have this constant kind of 30, 40% paddle. Uh, it actually allows you to continually get on the other side of the rip rather than like gassing yourself, paddling 100% to beat it once and then sit down and then get sucked away. Shane's doing the sit, sit paddle. That's always good too. That's like a 20%, you know, you want to mix the sit paddle with the paddle paddle. Now I'm back in the mix. Sick little inside wave coming through. So you beginner, intermediate surfers, those waves you have to actually work harder for and you don't quite have the surf muscles yet to like track those ones down, but it's good to endeavor to track those ones down. Here comes Allie, you really using the rip there. Look how fast she's going. The turtle was okay there, but probably could have used the torpedo because it just slowed her down here. So a note again, aggressive on the inside to get out the back. By that, I mean maybe 60% or it's like 40%. And then when you see the wave coming, you go to like 60, 80. Torpedo through, get out the back. Really get through the wave. You want to go faster at the wave. Oh, Bonnie, no. That was a tricky one, but a pretty good inside wave. Actually quite good, look at that thing. Those are the ones you want. Develop your desire to get on those ones. I'm trying to show everybody how to get on those ones. Like keep getting past the rip, keep getting in here. Push, push, push. Water is moving. And again, I've done the work, right? They're getting pulled off the peak and I'm not paddling past them necessarily to get priority on them. I'm paddling past them to show them like, look, you gotta keep staying over here. I will give any of these people a wave off of me if they want it, but they gotta get to the peak. Another wave coming through. And I was in position again. So, well, that was a little of a better turn. Slows up, fattens up through the inside. Stay low, waiting for it. Little check turn. This one's got a really weird warble on it. Just gonna take this one all the way in and do the walk around. All right, look at this, under the lip again, just by getting all that positioning, all that work to stay deep makes the takeoff easier. So you gotta do that equation, thinking about how it makes the takeoff easier. To do the work to stay at the peak allows you to get more of these kind of waves. This is not the best way that I caught this, this session or the trip by any stretch of the imagination, but if you're an intermediate surfer, imagine having all this time to practice stuff like this, like staying low, coming out, staying low again. A little bit of pumping here, foot back on the tail just to do a little tap. This wave was, again, it's very weird. It had a lot of lump and bend to it. The tide was coming up and not every wave was perfect, but they were super long. You're gonna hear some lovely uh, sounds from my neighborhood in this voiceover. Can't be helped. I am not recording this in a soundproof studio. All right, use the whitewater taxi again, and you're gonna see the shape of this bay again. I'm not gonna cut out the running. I'm actually gonna use this running part to just talk about something that was a theme for the whole trip was this just concept of aggression and Allie and I talked a lot about how the aggression I was talking about was that 60 40 percent of pressing a little bit harder to stay at the peak or that part from the inside where you see the wave coming at you and instead of stopping and being passive towards the oncoming wave, 
that's when you put in the afterburners to just go 80%, 90% aggressive at the wave as it's aggressively coming towards you. So it's that concept of meeting the wave's power with your own power, and that will help you get through the wave. Um, and since we're just a group of friends, we're not being aggressive with one another in the lineup. It's more just that aggressive desire to be on those inside waves. There, somebody just got a super sick one. It's, he, it's probably Nelson. Oh, it's Allie. Nice one. There she goes. So she was uh, appropriately aggressive at some point to get on that super long wave. And yeah, I'm stoked. Look at this one, wow. Awesome wave. Nelson, too far on the shoulder over there. Again, gotta be at that peak. You gotta want that little bit of danger. I don't know if you guys remember that newsletter I wrote uh, talking about Heidegger and Holderlin. And uh, the saying is something like from the Holderlin poem, poem um, from the danger, the saving power. And it's counterintuitive to go towards the more dangerous area of the takeoff spot. But once you start to make those positive connections that, oh, actually the saving power is in the danger area, meaning that it's actually easier to get in right there because the wave has more power. So when you're trying to, sometimes what I call it, when you're trying to cheat it, when you're trying to get in at what is perceived to be easier on the shoulder, you either A, don't get the wave, so you didn't get to experience the fun of the glide because you were trying to get in at somewhere that you perceived to be easier. And then other times you actually can get really, you know, messed up because that's the part of the wave that's actually throwing and pitching. So you definitely, anytime you surf, want to apprehend where the peak is at, what the lineup rotation, you know, we were always going to give each other waves if somebody wanted a wave here so the social situ situation here we've basically taken out any of those kind of rough socially aggressive factors because nobody's surfing it's just us five and uh we all like one another and want each other to do good at surfing so everybody's going to cheer everybody on here so we've just omitted a lot of the social stress factors by surfing this wave. I don't know where the crew is here. I've just paddled out into the rip. Oh, there's one. Allie's obviously doing the walk around because she got that long wave. There's Nelson on the shoulder. That rip just, there's this, uh, another idea which is interesting too, is that when the sand is shallow, like it is over these rocks, over this peak area, I call it like hydrophobic, like it doesn't want to have water over it. Oh my gosh, I'm on another wave. That just kept happening to me though. Right when I'd get out, there would be another wave. Staying low on this one. And I think I was actually too frothing because I didn't get the best waves that were out there. There were better waves than this one. But it was long. <laughs> Struggle on the end section. Didn't slow-mo that one for you guys. I think it just got lost in the various footage. Oh, a little wheelie on the shore break there. Another little thing to note about this line that we keep having to walk over in this fishing buoy, it's interesting when there are objects in the lineup like this. You always just want to register, you know, how dangerous they are. This one wasn't, you know, so bad, it's just the string. None of us ever hit it. It's kind of a funny little marker that would be in some waves and not in other waves.
there was no net underneath it. Not really sure what the fishermen used that buoy for. Have to talk to some more fishermen to understand. Fishing is a huge part of the economy down there. Looks like Shane got another wave, yeah. Cir cycling through the lineup. Everybody doing the walk around. There you see that bay. Again, there are tons of these. Like if this one happened to be crowded, you could just drive and go find something else. But there are so many waves, like I said, this could handle, I mean, you wouldn't want, like it would feel visually arresting and, you know, to surf it with 30 people, but I mean, even 10 or, it could certainly handle twice the amount of people. So we're five double us there were so many waves out there everybody's at the peak Allie's just paddling back out Shane's behind me and this is again this is a part of surfing right doing that walk back looking at the waves watching your friends surf taking a breather reassessing the lineup appreciating the scenery To that same point over and over again that's the other thing about the point right there's a point we catch the wave from the point we ride down the point we come in on the inside we walk back to literally the point uh the dot on the map would be that little outcropping of rocks a uh, little fun fact you see all that seaweed on that rock they harvest and eat that seaweed down there i actually ate some of it um like our second day of the trip, ate it at a restaurant. It's pretty good. Flavors really nicely with whatever they put on, on there. It has that, you know, algae. Es una alga. in the rip there's a wave coming through right here see what the women do and Nelson Nelson looked at it that one was a weird wave that one split so that's Nelson on the left Bonnie's right there and I think Allie's a little further out on the shoulder Nels taking a look at this one he looks like he could get into this one. Yep. Could have been looking a little more at the takeoff, but he got in. That wasn't the world's greatest wave. It was, you know, in these kind of conditions where there are so many waves and they're not all good, but they're all kind of good, it's really difficult to pick the right one. Uh, cause you could be more patient and just wait and wait and wait and get like the one that appears to be the biggest and the sickest. And then it's actually not Allie, just a little bit too far on the shoulder there. So you're seeing what happens when you don't take off under the white water. You really want to go at the peak, face the peak in your paddle, sit up, turn around. And again, have that wave, use, use that wave's power to help you get into it. So Nelson's wave was kind of short. He's doing the walk around. It's his 7.6 Barahona board as a tri-fin. Again, I'm just deeper than everybody. Anybody on this team could sit off me and take whatever wave I'm going for. That's part of our agreement with one another. But I'm going to, in any lineup, consistently do the work to stay in position. And so the more that you do the work, the more waves that you're going to get or be in position for at least have the opportunity for rips going through the lineup you see these funky ones and a little inside one that if a intermediate beginner surfer was on the peak would have been super sick not intimidating looks like that one's peeling off nicely and i'm in position 
tell Allie to go. She just could have given it a little extra paddle there. Again, just doing the work here. 30%, I see some waves coming up. See how these things materialize. Funny how the solo shot frames us on the far right. Done no tampering to this image. Could have m messed with the exposure and the framing if I wanted to, but this is just raw solo shot footage. All right, Bonnie in a good position for this one. Does the extra paddles, gets into the wave, nice. When you use the Dion buoy, you get the waves. Oh, look at that inside one. Now those ones are really good. Look at it turning inside of itself. Oof, those are the ones you want. That one just hit the sand so well. All right, Allie's in position now. And she got it. Only got to her knees on that one. Um, working on that, she could have got to her feet. Now I'm deep. In position. So this time, Bonnie and Allie got waves before me, and then I take the one behind them because there's plenty of waves for everybody. Didn't slow-mo this one. Again, there are a lot of waves. That one didn't go very far, didn't even make it to the buoy, so I'm just going to paddle back out. And a lot of times that's obviously what's determining whether I paddle or whether I walk. I'm not going to walk when I didn't even make it past that buoy. Generally, too, we talk a lot about this uh, in the training. See an expert or advanced surfer, you can recognize them by how they paddle most of the time. Our lower bodies are really quiet, really stable, and we're able, that stability coming from the torso, the lower torso, the thighs, the butt, and the lower abdomen is what allows our chest to stay up. So notice too, there's no splashing in the paddle at all whatsoever. Allie's right in front of me. She could have her heels up a little bit more. If she's doing the nice 30% uh, paddle back to the lineup as well. She got that wave on her knees, remember? But yeah, one of the key tenets of like what we're always trying to achieve is, ev is actually even the appearance of being an expert surfer because uh, it, it demonstrates to others watching you surf that you know you're in control of your equipment you have the right paddling form if a wave comes you'll be able to paddle into it and take off there's bonnie with the legs up higher looking good all back to the back to the starting point here back to the peak More waves coming through the lineup. It, this day, was it was just so consistent. Sun's trying to peek out. Look at this one. Wow. That one was a looked good. Oh, Bonnie got a little lit up. That was a look good, but wasn't that good. I mean, anybody probably watching would have been stoked to be on that wave, but that was a little bit miragey. Even right now, I'm doing the voiceovers. I was like, wow, that one looked really good where in a way this little inside one is hitting the sand it has white water on it but it's hitting the sand a little bit better didn't have so much funk and weirdness in it how look at this one. Ooh, that was a good one there it stands up right there that part of the wave is really good just hitting that sand perfectly and again just to be redundant and reiterate at a point break there's just it's called a point break because there's one point where you start and then you ride the wave in the same direction. So points are always going in one direction. We're, none of us are going right out here. There aren't any rights to be surfed. It's just all a left. If you go right, you go into that outcropping of rocks and the waves will close out. Nels must have got one off screen because here he is paddling back out.
There's some reverb coming off the rocks too. That's what gives some of those waves that funk. Look at that warble in the lip there. That was a good wave after it got over its warble. That one, not so good. Bad shape there. Bonnie is on the furthest inside on the shoulder. I'm closest to the peak. Then there's Allie and Shane. Here goes Bonnie. Good positioning there. Just the warble knocked her off. And if she was a little deeper and underneath it, definitely would have got in. Allie next. Nice. That was a good wave. So good session for Allie. It was also a really good session for Nelson and Shane. Bonnie got a wave. It was a good session for everybody. But definitely, if, ever, if the whole crew got another shot at this, they would have probably been picking off more of those insiders that hit the bar really well, giving a little extra effort. Here is also an example of the ocean taking a breather. For the most part, we've just seen pumping waves. It's not going to stay lully for that long, but this is a great example of just a lull. This would have been a great time for anybody to paddle out. So the ocean works that way in pulses and lulls. Sometimes it's just pumping, and that's all there is to it. But that lull didn't last that long because more waves are coming through. This day was pretty much just pumping, but it was nice to get a breather right there. Inside wave. That was a funky one. And I'm going to go for this insider right here. I was really trying to find one of these insiders where I could bottom turn around the white water. That turn felt good. And after three good turns, I dig a rail. We're going to look at this one again, though, because I just want to see the positioning again in my eyes. So I'm under the lip, I'm inside the rip, I'm looking down the face of the wave, and it's, some people right there will like throw their board away. You just need to stand on your feet and just trust your feet. I say that a lot, trust your feet. I'm gonna stay crouched here, pushing through around the white water, projecting out into the lip, little tap on this one right there. Then I'm gonna go one pump, down, little bottom turn this wave is steeper this turn that one allowed me to project up more kind of get the fins out the back stay in the compression push through the bottom steep again right here and just another little check turn and trying to see what goes wrong here Just dug a rail. The wave did a strange little breathing thing on me, and maybe the turn right there wasn't the right call. Short ride, so uh, paddle back out. A lot of paddling and surfing. There's a lot of surfing in this session, though. A lot of time on the wave face. I think the average length of ride is anywhere from 17 to 30 seconds mini duck dive there unnecessary water temps about 58 I'd say I'm wearing a 3-2 still blue wetsuit with a, a detachable hood it's just like an old Excel hood that Juan left in my van one day five years ago and uh, I've never given it back to him it's my favorite hood size medium I think Allie's in a hooded 4-3. That was basically what a lot of us were wearing. Something 4-3-ish. The 3-2 by Still Blue feels like a the warmth of a 4-3, the flexibility of a 3-2. Looks like Allie was just taking a rest on the shoulder. Totally legitimate. These are, you know. This isn't a long session that I have on video. This The total solo shot footage here is 50 minutes. 
but it's a lot of paddling and a lot of surfing in 50 minutes. Nelson looking like he's in a great position for this one. Yep, excellent ride, Nelson. Awesome. So the crew doing the work, coaching paying off. Show everybody where the peak is at. They sit at the peak, do the work to be at the peak, and then they, you know, Nelson's still riding that wave. We'll see him walk through the camera, vision, you know, in five minutes. <laughs> it's gonna take that one for a long time. Everybody's at the peak. Have a little conversation, a little tea party, a little sandwich. Bonnie is in position for this wave. And the move there would have been for her to paddle at the peak rather than just paddle from where she was at. So a lot of times it's like, I've been, I've been articulating it this way. Like you, when somebody's throwing you a ball that you're going to catch, you kind of have to go to the ball to catch it. Because if you just stand where you are, and the ball's on its own trajectory, you might miss the catch. So the wave is like that too. There's a way in which you're receiving the wave and you need to adjust your position to be in the best spot to receive the wave. Um, similarly or adjacently, if you're not looking at the wave, you can't receive it. So that's why we always want to keep our eyes on the wave, especially as it's shifting and changing. And in that way, it's not unlike a ball traveling through the air which the trajectory is never certain. There are factors that are gonna change the ball's arc. And so when we do ball sports, we have to have the hand-eye coordination to track the ball. In this case, we're tracking the wave or we're tracking the peak, uh, which in its own weird way is a ball of sorts. It's a circular parcel of energy moving through the water. All right, now Shane is deep. Bond's underneath it here, going for another one. Ooh, and that lump is just gonna knock her off. So that was a great try. The wave wasn't good, and now she's stuck inside for this one. Shane, great wave. Smart move by Bonnie here to go in and try the paddle out again. She could have paddled harder for that whitewater though, so she got waves in this session just a little out of rhythm and that really honestly happens to everybody everybody gets out of rhythm so bond just had a little more out of rhythm session than the rest of us but she's making some smart moves going in smart right here i was in rhythm this session so i promised you guys i would make one of these where i am in rhythm and this is what being in rhythm looks like i just happen to always be in the right spot when a wave was coming through Shane, watching his friend surf. It's what we do when we surf. Pay attention to each other. Get stoked for each other. Little soul move times two. Sun's coming out. Okay, we're gonna watch this one again. It's gonna go really slow on the takeoff here. The rest of the ride is gonna be in fast motion. So just under the lip looking up at that top one third of the wave back goes up high legs are over the tail use the waves power to push my body up feet hit hands come off eyes are looking down the line i'm gonna stay in a crouch here through this whitewater section where it's like using the whitewater i come straight down because this wave has a bigger wall I'm going to compress and push water through the fins up into the section and just ride the wave the rest of the way. Again, I said this was going to be in full motion. Projecting out, cutting back to the white water source. Don't want to outrun these waves. They're slow. That turn did not feel good. Got water in my wetsuit. Just having fun with it here. We'll cut back to end the ride and take that taxi into the shore. Another walk around. 
So I'd say it's about 50-50, the walk around paddle back outs. It's a good ratio at a point break. Mix it up, half walking around, half paddling out. Some controlled burning in the background. They call the firewood leña in most Latin American countries. We were burning a lot of leña because it was cold and the heating at the house we were staying was all wood burning stove. It wasn't so cold though that like, like we weren't getting cold in our surf sessions. When the sun came out, that was nice too. Get that radiant heat, warms up those black wetsuits. I'm moving kind of slow here. A lot of waves, another wave breaking past me in the background there. more waves you can just see the way that this beach is formed these these waves are just hugging that shallow part of the sand there you go it's a nice shot there's a wave breaking out the back somebody's going for it Ooh, just missed not easy why well, you got to be under it bond doing the smart thing when you're having a look remember i was talking about bond being a little out of rhythm so whenever that happens, what she's doing is really the best thing to do. Go in, reassess, try to find those waves. When you're doing coaching with me, you know, we're having a little strategy talk, a little check-in about, about the waves, about the positioning, about how you're feeling, you need some water, about other people's rides, asking questions, where should I sit, how often are the sets coming through, why am I not catching those waves? And other things, you know, positive things. It's pumping, oh my gosh. That wave up the way there is looking a little weird. Tide's definitely getting higher. And the wave we were surfing actually got a little better with the tide until it got super high. And then it just got really fat. But I mean, pretty much anybody would still take it and continue surfing it. wave up the up the way look at that weird where that see where that like mushy part is there's a rock underwater there that you can't see well, I surfed it on a bigger day with Shane and it was definitely weird it looks really good it's very hard cool reflection there solo shot cameraman Oh, I think Nelson got just a super sick one right there. It's the Dion celebration of a great student ride. Always stoked for you guys to perform, whether it's abroad or at home. Nothing makes me happier, really. And then somebody else. Or that great wave was finished and I'm still celebrating. But probably two people got rides. And you've seen this paddle out now like seven times. Rips pretty strong right now. You can see that water yanking, rushing. Funny too, just thinking of the theme of this video, like this is what surfing really looks like. I've done a lot of wave riding but there's just so much of this interstitial stuff, so much walking around, paddling, waiting for rips, positioning out the back. So that would have been Shane and Nelson getting waves right there because Allie's the one that's left out. So those would have been the people I was cheering. Looks like I kind of mistimed this paddle. Some sets are about to land on my head. Allie's out the back alone, charging. These waves are not small. They're not huge. But, you know, definitely want to have a couple years of surfing under your belt before you're surfing waves that look like this. Oh, 
looks like I made it around that one. Allie just got herself a little stuck inside. I'm, I'm caught inside on this set, but you know, not panicking. There's not much I can do about it. Just gotta get my duck dives in. Keeping that lower body steady over the tail as I paddle through the soupy part. Oh, Shane's still out. Nelson doing the walk around from his mega ride. I have not been able to get the solo shot to do the double tag thing yet. I think it really confuses it. And I haven't wanted to waste sessions. Uh, recently, I've had some luck doing a tag handoff. So, could have made this session like three hours long and just handed the tag off. I'll be doing some tag handoff, what surfing really looks like, from New York coming up. Have a few of those sessions. Been having good luck with that, actually. Allie. Ooh, just off the peak on that one. So, again, there's that example of wanting you really need to be under the part like you kind of want a desire for the wave to break on your back a little bit i know that's really uncomfortable for a lot of people but on a wave like this where you understand that if you can just get in it's gonna stay open for the most part the way the sand is set up and this particular day that we're surfing it so if you can handle the power on your back you're going to get out onto an open face at some point. Set coming through. I've paddled deep. Looking at it, looking at it, trying to position for it. I think I want it. Am I going to get it? And nope. Just uh, didn't believe in myself enough to take off right there. So didn't take off on that one. Plus, I know there are gazillions of other waves. I think I'm looking at it though going, oh, really wanted that one. Just could not find the right position for it. Checking out the beach, checking out my positioning on the beach, seeing what the crew is up to, looking back out to sea. Looks like I'm in a little breather of a lull. insider not a very good insider but i mean still it's peeling it's going to the left predictable chatting with friends sharing the lineup all alone birds flying by this is a pretty epic surf trip experience that's why we go on the trips fine waves alone not geotagging the spots whole area looks the same every spot's only so very barely different from the other spot just gotta drive down some roads poke your head around looks like we got some lines coming through now gonna start moving so we are resting the lines come through we start moving waves are moving you're moving oceans moving you gotta move all right looks like i'm gonna go on this one It's gonna be the last wave in the video. A little snap back to the pocket. The wave does this weird thing right here where it dies onto the belly, back, cut back to the power source. A little snap in the pocket again. And try for the tail throw and eat shit. All right, this is the last wave. Video's coming to an end. Solo shot, find me. All right, here's the main part that I want you guys to see here. The, this is, we're gonna go on the theme of receiving the wave like a ball. So look at my positioning here. I'm facing at the wave. The wave is standing up and my chest is out to the wave. I'm receiving the wave. I'm looking at the peak right there. I'm like, okay, I'm at the peak. This is in 10% slow motion. I've ascertained at this point, look at how steep that looks. I'm like, okay, this is a good spot. Right when I get 
I'm going a little deeper right when I get to the deeper spot, right when I'm like, now I'm going to look at the wave differently. Now I'm catching the ball. I'm looking down the line. I did all the work previously to get in position, so I'm not looking back at that scary part. Look at behind me. What if I was still looking at that? That's I don't want to be looking there. So I'm looking down the line. I've gotten myself into this perfect little position right here, right under the lip, looking down the line, get my chest up, lock the fins into the back of the wave. That gives me the leverage and the stability to just slide those feet right underneath my body and hands are off and I've got the wave now. Looking down the line. And then now I'm behind the white water, which is where you want to be to start turns when you're on a really any board, especially on a shorter board. I'm gonna press lightly, not too hard. I'm not gonna overextend or over rotate my upper body. I'm just gonna get myself out onto the shoulder enough where I'm gonna pivot around my back foot in this little cupping part of the wave, drive through the fins, hands over the feet back to the white water, back to the power source, because once I get here in a crouch so it doesn't take me out, that little ball of energy right there is going to shoot me back out, although this wave did do this really weird thing right here. Back to the power source. So advanced surfing is all about getting back to the power source, using the parts of the waves that are vertical when they're vertical, and using the you know and waiting when they're mushy. So we're gonna watch this one more time, and the video's over. Hope you get a lot of takeaways from this. It's just one 50% slow mo ride, and then we're done. So light bottom turn. And I'm really, like I was talking about earlier in the beginning with this board, I'm kind of babying the rails. I'm not pressing my hardest. The other thing to notice also is just, I talk about this in every video, is the quietness of the upper body. I'm not really over rotating my upper body to do any of these turns. It's a leg sport. I'm pushing through with my legs, pushing through, matching the hands with the toes. Now this part's more vertical. Light bottom turn though, just to project up into that section. So sometimes you just wanna press at 50% and get the right flow.